Welcome to Lesson 2.2.8, Linear Functions and Transformations. Our objectives today are to graph linear equations using transformations, which means you have to be able to identify transformations in the equation. So let's look at our parent function. Our parent function is y equals x. It's very basic. Um, there is no transformation in this equation at this time. What we need to notice, though, are a few, a couple characteristics that are important to point out in a parent function. And the first one is the y-intercept. Notice there is nothing on the end. Um, normally, you guys are used to thinking of y equals mx plus b, a linear equation. The b is your y-intercept. In this case, b is 0. So our y-intercept is 0, 0. Also in this parent function, there is no number in front of the x, which means it has a slope of 1, or 1 over 1. And you can see that in the graph because it goes right through 0, 0, the y-intercept. And if I count up 1 and over 1, that's where my next point is. That's my slope. And I could continue to do that. Remember, that's one of the characteristics of a linear equation is that the slope has a constant rate of change. It's always the same as you move up. Now let's look at the transformations of the parent function, of a linear parent function. So we get away from m being slope, and now we call this a. And you'll see as we move on through different types of functions that we tend to use a, b, c, d as the transformations within the function. So we will call the transformation to the slope a, and we will call the transformation to the y-intercept b. There's a third transformation in a linear function, and you can't see it in here because right now we have a positive but you could have a negative in front of the slope, and if you did have a negative in front of the a, that transformation is called a reflection. And you'll see that when we graph the equation, the equation actually reflects. It reflects over the um, y-axis. The second one here, the a, if we had something other than 1, then we would have a transformation. That's going to be our change in our slope. So I've listed down here, and again, if you're taking notes, make sure you write this down. It's going to be very important, and it will remain consistent no matter what type of function we're studying. So these notes can stay with you for the rest of the year. If you have a slope that is greater than 1, so a slope of 2, a slope of 3, even a slope of 3 halves, because that's greater than 1, that's considered a stretch. The line will get steeper. It will stretch up. On the other hand, if you have a slope that's less than 1, say 1 half, or 1 third, or 1 fourth, or even 2 thirds, that's small. That means that you have a shrink. In fact, your line is getting less steep. It is shrinking back down to the x-axis. Think of the x-axis as the ground. It shrinks back down to the ground. The third transformation with a linear function is your b value. And that's a shift. It's either a shift up or a shift down. So if you have something other than 0, say it's a plus 2 or a plus 3, in other words, if it's positive, your whole line will shift up. And it makes sense because your y-intercept will no longer be 0, 0. It'll be whatever's in the b value. If the b value is negative, say you have a negative 4, negative 10, your whole line will shift down. Let's look at some of these examples, actually. So in this example, we have the equation y equals x plus 5. In this equation, you can see the parent function here in purple, going right through 0, 0 with a slope of up 1 over 1. But when we transform it by having a shift up of 5 right here on the end, our line just picks up and shifts upwards, whoops, let's go back, shifts upward to 5 right here. Nothing has changed in the slope. You'll notice our slope has no transformation. All that we've done is we've taken our y-intercept and we've shifted it now up to 5. Here's another example. If we look at our transformation on this one, we have a minus 3. Well, we learned that that would be a shift down of 3. And again, here's our parent function in purple. If you'll notice, our transformation says that we shift down here to 3. But our slope has stayed the same. We did not have a transformation to the slope. 
So now let's look at some transformations to our slope. In this case, we have a transformation of four. Remember that anything greater than one is going to be a stretch. So now we have a stretch of four. And again, you can compare the purple, which is our parent graph, to this brown one. You can see the brown one is much steeper because now we have stretched up four. We have no transformation to the y-intercept, so it still goes through zero, zero. But let's count together. So from here, if we go up one, two, three, four, and then run over one, there's the next point, and that comes from our four. Let's look at another one. In this one, we have a slope of one over three. That's less than one. So we have a shrink of one third. And again, let's compare. The purple graph is our parent function, goes right through zero, zero. Up one over one, our slope is up one over one. But now we've changed our slope because we have a transformation. Instead, we're gonna go up one and over one, two, three right here on the brown graph. That gives us a transformation of one third, which is a shrink of one third. It is less steep than our parent function. It is shrinking down. Okay, let's try one more. In this case, now we do have a negative in front of the x. In other words, in front of a, a is understood to be one. Remember that this kind of transformation is called a reflection. And now you can clearly see how our purple line, which is our parent function, has reflected itself over this y-axis and it looks exactly the same but on the other side. If you were to put some sort of mirror here in the middle, the brown one would be just be a reflection of the purple one. Okay, and that is a separate transformation all and of itself. It's called a reflection. Let's start putting some together. So say you have the graph of y equals negative 5x. We have two transformations because we have the negative, which we said is a reflection. We have the 5, which is greater than 1, so we have a stretch of 5. And when we graph that, we can see that it's the brown graph so it has been reflected over the y-axis, and it's a lot steeper because it has a stretch of five. Now let's look at another one. This one has a slope of one-half and a y-intercept of four. So when we identify those as transformations, we say that it has a shrink of one-half because it's less than one, meaning the graph will become less steep, and you can see the brown graph is less steep than our parent function, which is the purple graph. The b value, which is 4, means that the whole entire graph shifts up from 0, 0, which is our parent function. So here it is, shifted up to 4. So we have two transformations in this linear function. Okay, let's look at another one. In this case, we have 3, which is a stretch, and we have a negative 6 on the end, which is a shift down. So we have a stretch of 3 and a shift down of 6. Starting from our parent function here, if we shift down to 6, there's our y-intercept. And then if we look at our slope, we went 1, 2, 3, over 1, and that made our graph much steeper. Let's do some examples. So in your practice, you will have to you will be given a linear equation and you will have to list the transformations to the parent function and then identify a graph or graph the function. So if we look at this one, y equals x minus 8, the only transformation on here is the minus 8. Remember that y equals x is a parent function. Anything that is added on to that is in fact a transformation. Well, if you remember the minus 8 is a shift down, shift down of 8, that's the transformation. In order to graph this, we would first plot our y-intercept of this 0, negative 8. Then we need a second point to draw a line, so we always go to our slope. Well, on this one, we have no transformation. It's just 1 over 1. So we go up 1 and over 1 and put our second point there, and that's how we would get our line. Okay, number 2. In this example, we have two transformations. We have this 2 on the end, then we have a 4 in front of the x. The 4 is our stretch or shrink, and since it's greater than 1, it's a stretch of 4. The 2 at the very end, that's our b value, and that's a shift up of 2. Oops, that should say 2. When we graph this, 
we would plot the y-intercept at 0, 2 for the 2 on the end, which is right there. And then we would plot our second point using our slope here of 4, which is over 1. So we would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, and there is our second point. Let's try one more. In this example, we have all three transformations. We have the negative out front, we have one half adjusting our a value or slope, and then we have a five adjusting our b value or our y-intercept. So first things first, the negative means we have a reflection. The one half means we have a shrink because it's less than one. So we say a shrink of one half. And the five means we shift up five, it's positive five. A reflection, a shrink of one half, and a shift up of five. Now when we're graphing this, we graph it the same. We always go to our y-intercept first and we plot this point. Then we look at our slope. In this case, let's take the negative and the one-half together. Since it's a negative slope and we always read our graphs from left to right, so we would start on the left side of the graph, we would need to make sure that the line angles down. We're going down slope if it's negative. So from here, we have rise over run and our rise is one and our run is two. So we can either go up one and over two here, or we can go down one, as long as our rise is up or down, and over two to here, and plot our point. And that's how we graph using transformations, and these will help us in the future to graph more complicated functions. So it's good to learn them on linear functions because they're more simple, and then we'll progress using more complicated functions. So just to wrap up, Remember that we have three transformations. We have reflections, which is a negative. We have stretches or shrinks, which pertain to our slope. And then we have shifts up or down, which is the y-intercept. And that concludes this lesson.